the end of World War II, one of the first things Ernest Tipson does upon release from internment at Changi Prison is to check the Bible house. Tipson is the representative of the British and Foreign Bible Society for Malaya and Singapore. The Bible House is essential to him because it is the Bible Society of Singapore's permanent home. At the time, it is also the headquarters of the Bible mission in the whole Asia Pacific. Tipson has to make sure that no one else claims and occupies it after the devastating war. The first Bible house is built at 7 Armenian Street after the site is acquired in 1907. Positioned in the heart of the city, near the Port Harbor, it is the ideal location to store scriptures and distribute them around the Malay archipelago and the wider world. Well, the Bible house then existed during four generations of the Chu family. We remember it because the Anglo-Chinese school was located near it. The Bible House was a landmark to many ACS students. With its base in this strategic location, the Bible Mission grows exponentially. More than twice as much scriptures are sold and distributed. New translations and revisions of scriptures are published and distributed in the Malay Archipelago, Asia Pacific region and beyond. Singapore gradually becomes a center of missions in Asia. Indeed, and Antioch of Asia. In 1942, Singapore falls to the Japanese. They also take possession of the Bible House and occupy it. Well, the first Bible House was damaged during the Japanese occupation. I should also add that Mr. Tipson himself, uh, during his imprisonment, he was able to run courses uh, in the prison on uh, Christian uh, faith and other matters. Though deprived of its home, the society and volunteers continue to distribute scriptures and hold annual Bible Sundays from St. Andrew's Cathedral, holding out the light of God's Word during this period of darkness. After World War II, the society repossesses the Bible House my family gave a farewell tea to Mr. and Mrs. Ernest Tipson around 1947-48. My father captured the two Ernests with his camera. I was named after Mr. Ernest Tipson. As the Bible mission gradually resumes, the country also enters a new era. On the 9th of August 1965, Singapore becomes independent to suit the country's rapid development and growing needs, the society rebuilds the Bible House into a six-story building with a modern, open Bible design. It is completed in 1974. The Bible House was home not only to the Bible Society, but also several Christian organizations such as Scripture Union and Singapore Youth for Christ, which had a profound influence on my Christian life and journey. The second Bible House increases the society's capacity to carry out more mission activities and makes the Bible House a center for various churches and Christian organizations. I'm already 25 years with the Bible Society, so I've seen the uh, old building. My job scope with the Bible Society is to um, manage the Scripture Publishing Center. With the use of computer technology in the 1980s, the Bible House also transforms into a scripture production and Bible knowledge center, printing scriptures for local and overseas peoples, and also conducting Bible literacy courses and public conferences. So I remember one time, the roof really opened where there was a heavy downpour. So water was just flowing down from the top, which is six story high, down all the way to the basement. And then our basement actually is our warehouse. It's about half the knee height. 
so everybody was busy helping to move Bibles and books, whatever, up to a higher shelf. As the world enters the 21st century, new challenges abound. To move forward and better facilitate the Bible mission in another new era, the Society rebuilds the Bible House a second time, completing the work in 2011. With the addition of an upcoming new rooftop pavilion in April 2017, the new Bible House enhances the Society's abilities in fulfilling its role as a beacon of light to the world. The Bible House is indispensable in expanding the Society's mission scope from translation, publishing, and distribution to now include literacy, engagement, and advocacy. As the Society continues to face new challenges, it evolves in its mission and approach to rise above them, holding forth the eternal Word of God in an ever-changing world.